solid revolution is defined as the solid obtained by rotating the region about an axis. So most of the time it's about the x-axis, but it can be revolved around your y-axis or it could be revolved around another line and things get a little bit more complicated when it's about another line. Um, spheres in circular, the right circular cone are examples of a solid revolution. If you take a circle uh, that's centered on the origin and you rotate it about the either x or y axis, you're going to end up with a sphere. Um, so here is an illustration. Here's your region. Here's the area under the curve. We're rotating it about the x-axis. So they show you the cross-section of the circle. And then this is what the final solid is going to look like. Because of the curve, the left side uh, has a shorter radius than the right side. Um, so it's not quite a cone because it's curved, but kind of sort of like a cone, except it doesn't have that point on it. But anyways, here is the process. Every single time, um, think about the area of circle. It's pi r squared. So we're adding up all these circles. So anytime you're adding something up, you're talking about an integral. So the volume is going to be pi times the integral from a to b of the radius squared. And the radius is typically the y value. Okay, you can see in this picture right here, the radius of this circle would be from the x-axis to the curve. That's the y value. So most of the time, we're going to end up squaring uh, our function and then integrate. Because the integral squared would be just squaring the area under the curve, as opposed to um, adding up all of those areas of the circles. Okay. So let's look at example one. Calculate the volume of the solid rotated, uh, obtained by rotating the region under y equals x squared. That's why I picked this to illustrate with, even though you couldn't really see it. Um, about the x-axis between 0 and 2. Okay, so between 0 and 2. So every single time our setup's going to be this. Volume equals pi times the integral from a to b of the radius squared. So I'm just setting it up in general terms to get you in the habit of what it's supposed to look like every time. Um, so our radius here is the curve x squared. So x squared squared. When you raise the power to a power, we multiply. So that's the integral from 0 to 2 of x to the 4. We haven't even integrated yet. We've just set it up. So the antiderivative of x to the fourth would be x to the fifth over five, evaluated from zero to two. So two to the fifth is 32 over five. Plug in zero, you get zero. So the area of this volume, or excuse me, not the area, the volume of this solid of revolution would be 32 pi over five units cubed. Volume is always cubed. So some people think that these are actually easier than the cross sections and in some cases they are, uh, but we are going to look at some more complicated examples here in a second. Okay. It's helpful. Sometimes it's easier to go ahead and combine that term so that you don't have to anti-differentiate so much. Okay. So it's the, when, when we're thinking about the area, think about the cross section right here. Okay. The, to find the area of the actual solid, it's going to be the outside circle's area, so pi r squared of the outside circle, or the top curve, minus the area of the inner circle, pi r squared of the inner radius. Um, that's going to give you those cross sections, and then we're adding up all those cross sections. Okay, so that's why that looks the way it does. So let's look at x squared plus 4 and y equals 2. We're going to uh, rotate it about the x-axis between 1 and 3. Okay, so let's set this up. Volume equals pi, the integral from 1 to 3, the 
the outside function or the top function is x squared plus 4 squared minus the bottom function. In this case, it's just 2 squared. Okay, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. Now, let's boil that out. That's x to the fourth plus 8x squared plus 16 minus 2 squared is 4. And 16 minus 4 is 12. Just saving myself a line here. Okay, integrate x to the fourth is x to the fifth over 5 plus uh, 8x cubed over 3 plus 12x evaluated from 1 to 3. And typically these problems are calculator active um, because they're more testing do you understand the setup, not can you do all this algebra. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just skip to my calculator here. 3 to the 5th over 5 plus 8 times 3 cubed. And honestly, if this were calculator active, I would have done the calculator like from step 1. After, after I set it up, I would have just plugged that into my calculator and had it do it. Okay, um, but I wanted to make sure just in case sometimes these do show up on the calculator inactive. So you never know. That's the first part. Pi 783 over 5 minus, when we plug in 1, we get 1 fifth plus 8 thirds plus 12. So 783 over 5. Minus 223 over 15. This would have been way more efficient on your calculator. Sometimes you do get really weird looking answers like this. Okay, don't be freaked out by that when you're doing these problems because there are lots of fractions involved. Sometimes it does get weird. Don't automatically think that you're wrong because you get something weird like that.